Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour on uh, the 10th of October, Monday, holiday. We're looking at this arch formation. Just how this happens is always just so pleasant to see. You've got a left side low that was made just before 8.20, uh, around about 36, let's call it 36.39. Runs up to a peak, A. B, C, D. Remember the chapter where we're always looking for four higher peaks? So it goes, it, it cross, the line crosses positive at about 8.22. <clears throat> and you go peak A, higher peak B, higher peak C, higher peak D. Pulls back, holds the support line of the green nine period exponential moving average, walking the nine EMA. Goes to peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, double top. And if you look at this side, uh, I'm going to do that. I didn't want to, but I will do that just for demonstration purposes. This peak D at about 9.06 this morning, Eastern time, at a high of 3.67, no, it was a 3, yeah, 3.67.50. When it came, pulled back, held the nine period moving average, did an exact double top at about 9.18. Um, look, the MACD was turning down. The stochastic was fading way under 80%. And look what happened. It made a beautiful arch formation in a, in a left side, right side bar symmetry. This bar symmetry, I've given courses on that. The bar symmetry is just remarkable. How the market takes the same number of bars on the left side to make a high or a low, it depends, and then comes back to that starting point in just about the same number of how does it know to do that? I mean, that's incredible. Look at this arch formation. Takes out the two. It walks. It, it holds the 200 period moving average. Then it takes it out. Not easy because it wiggles and woggles around there, zigzagging, zigzagging. Makes a dreaded H and pulls back. And what my time timeline was for 9:59, but at 9:56, it takes out that left side low. Isn't that? I, I mean, geez, I don't know. Okay, so now we're trying to find some support here, and we'll go on from there. So what we're looking at, let me just run this down here. So within the context of markets, for, for subscribers to an opening call, my video, which I, I wasn't able to send out on uh, Saturday for technical reasons, but I got it out Sunday, uh, was really showing that sector-wise, there were very few sectors that were participating, and the sector that was most important, the sector that for years, almost decades, I've been saying when the semiconductors move up, it's a good, it's a really good sign. It helps the market rally. When the semiconductors move down, it's not a good sign because that kind of, if you get a rally in the general market, if the semiconductors don't move up, you remember, think of the semiconductors as the oil sector of the 1900s, 1900s meaning the period of the 20th century. So the semiconductors are in everything. And the most important part about this is that the semiconductors have had their own problems, almost separate to the general market, and then it became the market's problems. Uh, there was a decline in the number of chips available, et cetera, et cetera. Most importantly, what we're looking at now is that the SMHs, the Semiconductor Market Vectors ETF, um, has gone from the most recent high of 247, 318 was a high at that double top high back in January. Well, it's gone from the most recent uh, high in August the 8th, August the 15th at 247.06 down to the left side low of just over a week, a week and a half ago of 185.11. And what is it doing? It gaps down with advanced micro devices. Oh, I meant to do some of this over the weekend to show subscribers. I don't have to. I can do it here. This is not. This, this is for general consumption. That I don't know if advanced in, uh, uh, advanced micro devices is really the um, canary in the coal mine, but all I can say is that 
for decades. And I remember when Sanders, it wasn't Colonel Sanders, I can't remember the guy's name. I know it was Sanders or Saunders if he pronounced it. I got a cousin who's Sanders who pronounces it Saunders. Um, what was the was the CEO, a very creative guy, a crazy guy. And you never knew with him what he was going to say, what he was going to do. But let me show you, advanced micro devices has gone from single digits over, and I used to have this totally notated, but now it's not, but I've got enough to go from 1999, where it made a high at 40 at 48.50 back. This is, I think, a pre-slit high. Anyway, June of 2000, the general market, Dow made a high in 2000 in January, mid-January, March was the S&P and the semiconductor, uh, March was the S&P's high, and I think March was also the SMHs. Let me just, uh, I don't have to double check, but in that period. So advanced micro devices goes to 48.50 and then plunges to about, I should have typed it in here, <laughs> plunges to about four, no, $3.10. $3.10 in 2002, $3.10. $3 and then manages a little bit of a rally and goes right back to 42.70 peak D. Uh, March of 2006, and then slumps down to $3.87 in 2008, and then rallies to a peak D, but only to about $10, $10 uh, in 2010. Then it pulls back sharply, makes a low, uh, I'm not sure if it was a low or low, but it makes a low in the, uh, let's just see what it is. That was 387 in 2008, this is a little higher. This is, uh, I should say, a little lower, $1.81. Is that correct? No, $1.62 in 2008. What was I thinking? Uh, $1.62. Let me just change that. I wondered about that. Uh, $1.62. Yeah, we go. We're changing it on the fly. Edit. One sixty-two. So it comes all the way back, arches over, comes back, goes to the ones, and then in 2015, and then it screams to peak E, pulls back, goes to an F at 3414 in 2018, pulls back and then screams to a, a peak G in the Chapman Wave methodology. You can't go H, G is the highest you can go. You have to recycle after that or it's a failure pattern. But at 164.46 in November of 2021, it tumbles. And it's tumbled to the low right now, 56.50. Well, proportionately, it could go quite a bit lower. It doesn't have to go to the ones, of course, because the others rally to the 40s and 30s and then pull back sharply. But is I've been talking about this for a little while. I, I say I can't believe it because whoever the lady is who's the CEO of Advanced Micro Devices these days, she's really worked very hard to put them on the cutting edge of whatever it is. But unfortunately, that cutting edge is the wrong place at the wrong time. Because it's gone from 164 down to 56. That's a 75% decline. So within within that context, the SMHs show a certain vulnerability right now. And they're making new, uh, is this multi-year? Yeah, multi-year. We can call it uh, at least 18-month um, uh, a new low. Uh, and I don't see any support in the um, monthly chart until you get to the 160, 150 area. So, and now what I tried to do was to show that in the weekly chart of the SMHs, uh, three week, four weeks ago and three weeks ago, there was a chance that the technicals were slightly better than they were at the local rate of supply. <laughs> Not now. We're at 180. So I want you to give a kind of a preamble to show the overall market. And what really is important. And now we're down, we're up 16. We'll be back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network at CNBC, 
Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, we're back and we're looking at uh, Dow's up 25, S&P's down 11. Oh, what makes this particular stock? Oh, what is it doing? Uh, Boeing is at 13. This moment, oh yeah, it's up uh, almost four dollars. It's up four dollars at one thirty-three eighty-five. Not sure why, but in reality, what it's doing is it's helping the Dow because the Dow should be down uh, about forty-five to fifty points. S and is down twelve, and could even be down more. But right now, it's being helped. So um, I, there's a lot to go through. So let me do this real quickly. I'll just run these down with the numbers. The Dow at this particular point, up a little bit, up 17, made this arch formation. This, this is the third the third big one. They've had some little ones before. And more importantly than that arch formation is the pattern that I call the dreaded H. And the reason I call it the dreaded H, because if any, uh, any pullback takes out the left side low, how it does it, it's going to be very important. Just by the way, the reverse Y on the upside, look, here you are on the Dow, there's a little mini reverse Y, the shape, not the letter. It looks like the letter Y. It's called the peak A in this particular uh, instance uh, from the low that was made back in 20, uh, 2020 in March at 18,213. Actually, that's where we went long. Still hold some long positions from there via the diamonds but you see there's like a little h and then you make another one at peak b it's like an h and goes higher and on the downside you can see each one of these in the weekly chart reversal takes out the left side low and then it just it's not a good sign so this is a very important moment because in on a purely technical level and i want you to introduce this um at this particular point i want you to wait about 20 30 minutes uh, before uh, after my show maybe getting to within an hour of the open of the of the market to start looking at the VIX index. And we discussed this all of last week. Actually, for weeks we've been talking about it. 34.88 was the high that was made late September. And then it pulled back and it closed for two sessions 
It went three sessions under the 14 period moving average. But look what happened. The nine period moving average is still much higher than the 14. Now, uh, if I had my druthers, what I would have wanted was a really bad close on Friday, followed by the S&P futures almost limit down over, over the weekend on Sunday night, or at least very sharp, more than 28 points down, more like 38 to 42 points down. And with us opening and that VIX index screams above the 44.88 high of the week of the 30th of September. But intraday, we get such a, so, uh, such a stunning climax with people just throwing in the towel, especially after looking at the portfolios over the weekend, that we get a substantial reversal that by the end of the day, I would have preferred if it was going to happen at all, that it was just horrible. There was an intraday rally and everybody said, this is it. And then at 1 o'clock to 1.15 Eastern time, there's another big sell if it doesn't take out the, the low that was made earlier in the day. But a horrible one. And then all of a sudden at about 20 past 2 in the afternoon, you get this sudden turnaround where uh, – Everything's just been sold. There are no more sellers, and now the buyers come in. But we didn't do that. Instead, what we did is we had a big 100, 100 something point uh, futures rally, and then in the Dow itself, uh, on the cash index, we went even higher um, uh, from from the lower Friday, uh, and and then we started to pull back, and now we're up 31. So in a way, this kind of this is a bit more wishy washy. It's not as solid as it would have been if there was just this an immediate sell-off. So I've been talking about this for some time, and all I can do is that I don't really have anything other than market experience to go on. You know, we've, been, we've managed at some point over the last uh, you know, 15, 20 years uh, here at TFNN um, to, to be able to pick lows, uh, sometimes we've had to do it a few times before we actually got it. But once you get it, it more than makes up any 1% or 2% losses within within a week. I, you know, at this particular point, um, I've been talking about just a series of interminable lower lows and lower highs. Even the highs, in fact, could pop a little bit higher than the previous high, but lower lows. And that just works its way because this seems to have in, endurance, from the November, December, January, it depends which index you're looking at, but certainly the S&P and the Dow from the January highs, we've just been interminably lower. And if you look at the March uh, high in the volatility index at 85.44, oh, there was coronavirus, oh, that was 2020. That wasn't the coronavirus. Oh. 2020? Then 29, 22. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, it was the talk, that was the start of it. Uh, Fed, et cetera. Um, and then we, we started to pull back. We've not even been close to that 85, thank God, 85.44 level in the volatility index. But you can see we're making a series of higher highs and so far kind of lower, higher lows in the volatility index monthly. And you can see the weekly chart finally has, for the third week, gone above this channel wave inside track repellent zone, this green line, this little mini channel, down channel. And what we're looking at is that um, the selling pressure, look at even the S&P, is still down 10. So I'm watching this very closely because if we make a U-shaped pattern uh, with a failure in the daily chart, that's one thing. But if this turns into a cup formation with a test, in the next, I, I say speed is the most important thing. So the test in the next two days of the 34.88 level, so far the high is only 33.39, uh, I say 34.88, yes. Um, that's just going to say that something just keeps keep coming in. So we don't get that crash scenario where in one day we just get a resolution that says, great, now you've got many weeks of upside before we come back to test. We just, even, even the April, look at this, even the, let's go to the S&P, even the April rally, let's just go right here, uh, there we are. So uh, even the, I'd even say the April rally was a shorter term, but the June rally lasted from June the, first, June the 17th to August the 16th. So that's two months. That's a pretty decent rally. So I, I don't know. I think in a certain sense, 
that kind of rally might have been used up for now. If we do get a rally, you can expect the S&P to, if it's in the last weeks, uh, to try to test the 4,090s, which is where the 200 period moving average is, or maybe it doesn't even get up there because look what we've got. We've got crude oil. Don't forget, we've still got the the chance. I, I don't want to give any weighting in, in terms of percentages of what the chances are of uh, some further um, threatening of nuclear action, right? So there's a lot of stuff sitting out there. You've got crude oil. And I, everything I read says that um, we've been, you know, we, we keep going to Venezuela and, and OPEC to for, for them to help us. But OPEC is, Russia is part of OPEC. I mean, what can I, I this, this is a whole contradiction in terms and very confusing to most people. Um, so what what are we doing? Oh, it's, it's tough. Crude oil is, look at this. This is a nice move up in crude oil. I'll be back in a moment. There's a lot to discuss. And uh, Basil Chapman, Tiger Dinesh's Hour. Dow's up 30. SB's down 10. I'll be right. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hello, just to show you the symmetry, uh, bar symmetry. Look from the from the 200 period moving average where the S&P futures E-mini e uh, broke down right here at uh, 9.52 this morning at 36.55.25. It came all the way back down to the 36.34, I believe it was, 34 level. Uh, 36.32.50. 36, uh, and then ran up to peak A, peak B. Oh, I didn't show this, did I? Uh, in the Chapman methodology, the ideal is where you try to identify the lowest low bar and you count each successively higher high 
and you want to get to four high highs alphabetized sequentially, A, peak A, peak B, C, D. You can't get all the way to E, F, and G. There's never an H. So D is where you expect a buy signal that's upgraded to a buy mode. Uh, other things can happen. That's where you can get your deepest decline. That's where you can recycle higher. And basically, uh, that's a very important fourth highest peak that you want to be monitoring. And now what we've got is we've got our peak D, and it went almost to that level that it broke down at. And uh, it's sitting, I've got FIB numbers and other, other horizontal lines. But at this particular point, the real issue is... Uh, how does it last? So we did go long this morning, the diamonds. We got stopped out for break even. Uh, I could have put in a wider stop because I think that there's enough evidence to suggest that within the context of uh, oversold conditions, there is just enough uh, residual strength to say some kind of a rally or bounce should take place. And uh, let me just go back to this crude oil. You see the stochastic? Running from under 20% so quickly to over 20, over 80%, now actually at 94%. This produces in the Chapman Wave methodology a pattern that I call the squash. Between that's the reason why the I always put the stochastic, the slow stochastic. I put it underneath the MACD, the moving average convergence. So just the standard MACD 12, 26, 9, 1, 1, and the uh, Stochastics 1433, 1, 20%, 80%. Just your sure standard tools, nothing fancy there. It's the way you use them that becomes very important. And now what we've got is this plus sign in the daily chart of the uh, crude oil has to be changed from a buy signal to an upgraded buy mode. So we've got an up arrow, we've got blue letters A, P, B, we're above this chapter wave inside track repellent zone. I do think that there will be a, a peak B with a fairly sharp pullback. And now what this says is any pullback should not last more than one to two sessions, maybe three, but not really. It's more like one session. And then you get to your C. After C, you can start. It's, what happens is that the stochastic's done its job. It's the torque. It's the first, second, third gear. But when you go to the higher gears, the MACD momentum has to take over. So that's really important. But the weekly chart still suggests that this is in play. Crude oil is in play for 2021, but it might see very strong spikes. And then there's an amelioration of all the, uh, the uh, anxiety about crude oil as things just, for whatever reason, kind of filter down and just slow down. And the price should then pull back. And then if there's another big spike at any point, if crude oil is trading above 102 to 105, that, I think, changes the course of events because that monthly chart says you've got a Chapman Wave inside wedge, uh, in, sorry, a rectangle formation that made the arch pattern, and now you might be seeing higher highs and higher lows. We'll, we'll have to monitor that. So I'm not talking about monthly chart right now. I'm talking about the weekly chart. Has it still to see the MACD cross positive? It's still very weak. Stochastic's still very weak at 23%. So the daily chart is the one that has... Um, <clears throat> triggered most of the buy. So for the subscribers to my opening call, we're trying to get into various sectors of the, of the crude oil, but I think that we can have patience. Question came up about MSOS, MSOS, which had a very good chart pattern recently. <clears throat> I said, this looks like it could pull back a little bit. This is advisor shares, pure U.S. cannabis sector. If you look at the MJ, which really, uh, that's the one that you want to be monitoring, it had this big spike. It goes from the 450s right up to just over $6, trading right now at $4.94. I think this is a story area. So let me just go back to your MSOS and say, if you are very long-term, and, and person asking me about that is very long-term oriented, I would say on these big pullbacks, if you want to have what I, I would, even though you're accumulating, I would still call them starter positions. I would not, for instance, this big spike here going into Friday's high, I would have, I would have thought that maybe taking something off and putting that same amount back with more shares on a pullback is the way I would play it. So it's trading at 11.42 MSOS advisor shares, pure U.S. cannabis. Sector is this like it's just like an ETF for the sector? I guess so. Um, 
So it's almost like MJ, which is the alternate harvest, which we've had huge profits in going back uh, quite a while. We haven't been in for a long time. So this just says to me at 11.46, down 34 cents. Be careful, because I think that it could very quickly test the um, 10.50 to $10 area. So just treat it as an accumulation over a period of time. I just wouldn't get too carried away. When I say accumulation, a very tiny portion of your portfolio with very tiny portions that you put in. And only when it really shows substantive higher highs and higher lows. In other words, when it starts to trade in the 16s, it's 11.43 right now. Yes, that is what almost 50% higher. Not the point. The point is I would prefer to buy the trend, the tide right now is still a downtrend, sporadic rip tides to the upside. I don't want to be there until there's something really substantive in the sector. And I use the MJ as a, a proxy to go with the one that looks pretty much like the one that you mentioned. So, yes. Next question came in with, uh, let me get to it. <clears throat> Yeah, so within that context, so F FCX, yeah, you know, FCX, this is the copper area, Freeport, McMurrin, uh, Inc., copper. This is, you know, the chart says to me that it, it has a spring-loaded look to it. But unless you get it at the lower lows before it makes lower highs, it's really tough. Here at 29.63, it could be te wanting to test a trend line. Let me show it to you. FCX, this is trading at 29.62, up 62 cents. On a day like this, that sounds amazing, right? But in fact, you've got to look at it as making lower lows and lower highs. This is a, this is a great company because people have had this very long term, have seen massive gains. I mean, the single digits back in 2020 screams up to the 50s. And it's pulling back. And I have got it in a peak C in the monthly chart. But in this case, I'm almost putting it into the category of the S&P uh, monthly chart, which went to a peak B. But everything else has gone to a D or higher. Remember, peak D or higher is where you expect larger uh, declines to occur. So the B in the S&P is just an aberration because that sell-off was so intense going to the low of um, March of 2191 that it took out the previous left side low and you have no choice but to start a brand new buy mode uh, from that low of 2191 but the 2346 low of December of 2018 remember this is when the Fed was talking about higher rates and it went from 2940 in September down to uh, 2346 that's a, that's a huge move down so what we're looking at is I, I don't want to say this has gone to a PP and it has to go to a COD, mainly because you've got all every other index having a down arrow now in their monthly chart to say, just be really careful. Yeah, look, now the Dow's down 55 points. I'll be back in a moment. That's a chat for Tiger News. A lot of stocks to look at when I return. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. A prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So, uh, NVIDIA, this is... This is really interesting because look how many times this Chapman Wave Inside Track mini down channel has been hit. And it's being hit as we speak right now. Since it started its run to the downside, that trough that was made on the 1st of September at 132.70 saw a bounce to what? The nine period exponential moving average? And then it failed, made a lower low. And it went to a lower low on the 16th. At uh, 126.17, has another peak A minus because it failed, a dreaded H pattern, uh, right at the uh, 14 period moving average, but actually it fails at the nine and went under it and went a lower low and it kept doing that. And then it had five days <clears throat> of really good moves going from the 119s to the 136 area. Then it failed and now it's trading at 115. And this is a test. This is a test. Um, and the MACD has room to go down if this is going to go further. Stochastic's at 39%. This should have been, yes, there's a divergence, but that divergence has to see by Wednesday. I'd make it absolute latest at 3 p.m. Wednesday, maybe uh, 10 o'clock on Thursday, that um, I that NVIDIA Corporation of Semiconductors, one of the leaders, used to be one of the leaders in the section. Now I think that, this, that the uh, within the sector, the in demand area is not really in the NVIDIA, I think, and that maybe is that to do with gaming, I'm not sure. But the most important aspect about it is you've got the Eiffel Tower, which has ta almost taken out the left side low in the monthly chart that was back in 20, I think it was 2021. Uh, yeah, 20, 2021, was that March of 2021? Yes, that was the low of getting it right now. Everything's a little slow there. 115.67 uh, uh, screens up to the three, almost the 350 area. That's a massive move. And what's the low right now? 115.32. This is the perfect Eiffel Tower straight up down. Uh, look at that number of bars to the right side is just a little bit longer than to, uh, going up from the left side. Uh, MACD's terrible stochastic is at 7% in the monthly, 3% in the in the weekly, and 39% uh, in the daily. So there's a bit of a divergence, and it says, huh, you can have a divergence, but you use, but you use that positively by having a big spike, and time is of the essence. It means that uh, with a move down of five points steady, down 4.55, remember we had uh, Paul sending me uh, emails all the time saying, uh, NVIDIA, it's uh, it's." it's Way, way overboard. It's the uh, the one that keeps touted constantly over and over and over. And absolutely, and this peak F in the monthly chart from a 2021 high. Just look at this. So this is these are all important concerns and factors that we have to take into consideration. Um, and someone just mentioned that they had a put on the yeah, 
So let me just see what the exact uh, question is, or the question, or the statement. Whoops, I just bumped that off. No, there it is. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, just telling me that the, they got the put side and that uh, the uh, NVIDIA is acting very poorly. Absolutely. So the way I'm looking at it is this whole area of 115 is very consequential on a monthly basis. On a weekly basis, the MACD is starting to improve a little bit. The stochastic's terrible at 3%. You got a little bit of a divergence, but not enough for me to say, hey, this is this is something that looks fantastic. No, it looks it actually looks oh my goodness. It looks terrible and it's telling us a lot about what's going on. So I want you to oh thank you, Jerry Sanders. Yeah, Duffy. Thank you. Yep, it was Jerry Sanders. Uh, from uh, uh, did he actually start at Ross Micro Devices? I don't remember, but I do remember him. White hair, didn't he have a whole a bunch of white hair? Anyway, so yeah, it was very distinctive and absolutely made a statement whenever he got to talk about his company. Uh, question I got here about let me just go to the next one. So, the, yes, the SOXS is in fact, look, I wanted to show you this on Friday and I forgot. I was waiting for the SOX to see is it even possible that the. When you get to a G in the Chapman wave methodology, there if you have a if you're going up and you have a higher high, that isn't an H. There is no H. You have to call it either a C or you have to look back to see maybe I missed the turn. But actually, you didn't miss the turn in the SOX because the, and I would have had a tough time. I must say, on Friday, thinking that this. Uh, um, on Thursday night, looking at it, saying, wow, this should still go to a D. I would have said, yeah, I don't know how this is going to unfold. But look what happened. The SOX, which is three times short, the direction shares, three times short, the S majors, I uh, went from the 71 area, just an, actually says called it 70, plunged down to the 50 level. That's 20 points. I mean, that is a big move. And then what does it do? In two days, Friday, it gaps up huge. And today it spirals up and it's at 71.36 right now, but it made a new leg D in the daily chart. Now, I wanted to do this today, and I thank goodness I, I would have forgotten it, but uh, now I can do this. Look, the DOG, which is the objective in the Chapman Wave methodology, is to go from a buy signal and upgrade it to a buy mode, implying that you should get to a D. Well, look at this. You got you your D in dog. We, we've been long for quite some time since the August uh, rally highs. And then what happened was it pulled, um, it stopped and made the 200 period exponential moving average, orange line there, a really important support level. Streamed I went to a peak C, then it did a D, and then it did an island reversal. Now look at this. this I, I, these are very unusual. It makes an island reversal to the upside, meaning that it left a big gap between the price on one side and the bar or bars on the upside. And now you look at it and it says, hey, wait a minute, last week it gapped down. So it's an iron reversal to the downside. No, no, no. We've got an iron reversal back to the upside again. I mean, this zigging and zagging uh, in a one-to-one -one short, the, the, the Dow, <clears throat> I mean, this is not just a baby index. This is an important index. It's a cyclical index, basically. Um, and uh, look what it's done. Look at the SHs. So it's halfway, a little bit more than halfway, from the 38.49 high that was made to the 37 or maybe 36.90 low. Now it's a 37.91. <clears throat> but the weekly chart has an E. Is this E slash A? I mean, we've got a number of charts that look like this. For now, all I do is I put an E and I say the daily chart or the shorter term chart is our benchmark. We don't have to worry about the weekly yet, although the larger tide says it's still moving strongly to the upside. And the monthly chart has made this U-turn. Remember the, the, the cup formation? Look at talking about the U-turn. Show you live what we were looking at. We went to that peak D in the, in the one minute chart of the E-mini. Right there, look left side, right side, price time match. Just missed getting to that level, <clears throat> makes a peak D, and now it's plummeted down to a lower low. So these patterns work in up, arch, cup, straight line. They work in any time frame. If you want to put it together, I use on balance volume. You can use uh, Tom's uh, uh, volume method. You can use Larry's uh, method uh, using uh, Fibonacci plus the Gartley. 
um, you, you know, any method, you know, Dave White, it doesn't matter. Or, uh, Steve Rhodes it talks about his OUI, you got OUI. He talks about his level that I, I've got here as the ninth bit of wood he's got his own. Um, it doesn't matter. It's the pattern that over and over again. We've got 78, we've got 20, 60. And I'll be back. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So Apple is trading down 62 at 139.46 in my uh, weekend uh, overview video yesterday. I had mentioned that I thought that Apple has a really good chance of coming down to test the left side low of 2021 at 116.21. It's trading at 139. That is 20 something points. That's about 16% from down from here. But that to me would be kind of the using Apple as the late benchmark. You had Adobe, you remember I used that as a, a, near, a nearer term. I wouldn't say near term, I'm talking days, I'm talking about. Adobe talking about, if I just find ADB, there it is. Adobe going back to the high that was made uh, <clears throat> at 699.44 in late 2021. I said this is one of the uh, absolutely fantastic company, Cloud Digital uh, Commerce. It's just everything at that particular time. And now it's trading from 699 to 283. And that stocks like a Microsoft, Microsoft be now more mid-range, 
uh, in terms of benchmarks, making a lower low today, gone from 349 down to today's low of 228. These are big moves, and that was a high in November. And then you get to Apple, which made a high uh, back in uh, January. So we're talking about in sequence, and yet it's only pulled back to 139 from 182. Out of all of them, this is the one that's late. And is this just telling us that th there's more to come in time and price in this particular market? And I would have to say, just keep it in mind. You don't have to use it as the benchmark or anything like that. Just say the latecomer to the This is like the Fed. Late to the party will be late to the ending. You know those people in the party that stay and you keep saying, I'm ready to go to sleep, but you're still here? This is Apple. So just be very careful. Um, I have a lot more on stocks tomorrow. People have asked me to do that. And we'll be back tomorrow. Thank you. Both. Great program for the rest of the day. Check out both. Thank you. Back tomorrow. Have a good day.